Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm doing my usual meal prep, however, it's got a bit of a keto flair. So, um, oh, it's been about two or three months since I have started doing keto. Um, for those who don't know, do a bit of Google, it's pretty trendy. Um, but I am really enjoying it. I've already lost seven kilos um, and it's, it's a really easy diet. It's one of the easiest diets I've ever tried. Um, I've tried the shake diet where you barely eat anything and you're starving the whole time. Um, but yeah, this is the easiest one I've found. I'm not promoting it. Do what, do you, do what you want to do. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. The success that I had with keto, I think is because I meal prepped. So my family does not do keto. They do a separate I cook them separate foods every night. Um, I haven't really meal prepped much of their stuff, but I do meal prep mine. So basically, um, when I first started, I did a massive meal prep day. I meal prepped a whole heap of stuff so that it's just in the freezer. The, the, for lunch or dinner, I just grab it out of the freezer, put it with some veggies or salad or something like that, and there's my dinner. Really easy, and I think that's why I was so successful. <laughs> Don't even know where I was up to then. I just had a big crash bang. But yeah, so what I'm gonna show you today is the meals that I meal prep um, to try and keep me on track with keto. Um, I am gonna be doing some spaghetti meat, some taco meat. They're really easy just to throw and have for lunch. You just add some zoodles or add some salad. Um, I've also got a pork knuckle not exactly sure what I'm going to put with it or how to cook it, but I dare say I can just put some cauliflower mash or maybe some um, veggies or something like that. I um, can't remember. Oh, I think I've got some chicken that I want to do some butter chicken with. So I usually put that with the cauliflower rice as well. So come along with me and I'll show you what, I can, what I'm meal prepping today. Um, like I said, a lot of this can be adapted to any type of diet. If you're not doing keto, that's okay. Don't stress. Um, you don't have to bash on people who are doing a different diet to you. Um, but a lot of the stuff you can adapt to another diet. So if you don't want to use cauliflower rice, don't use cauliflower rice. Use normal rice. Use brown rice. Use whatever kind of accompaniment you want to use. So um, yeah, I'm just going to show you what I do to meal prep and stay on this keto diet. So if you want to come along, please come join me. For those that are new, please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions, put it in the comments below and let's go. Okay guys, so here are my ingredients for my first meal prep, which is the spaghetti meat. Um, that I'll add zoodles to when I go to cook it. I don't like putting it in the freezer, the zoodles, because they just turn out mushy and gross. So I prep the meat and then put them in the freezer for when I want to use them. So what I've got here, I've got some beef mince, which is the fattier mince, not the lean mince, because you, um, if you're doing keto, you want the fatty mince. If you're not doing keto, then just use the lean. Um, so yeah, this is going to make four portions. So I've got 500 grams of mince, um, I've just got some, a few pieces of bacon in here. I've got some chorizo that I got from the shops that I'm going to try and use up. So I'll probably just use one of these in the mix. I've got this um, spaghetti sauce um, from Moody. The macros aren't too bad. They're not great, but it's not too bad. Uh, also got an onion and I've got some mushrooms that I want to try and use up so I might put some of them in there as well. So I am just going to chop up my onion, chop up my bacon and I'm going to put that in the pan and fry that off and then we'll start adding the mince and the other ingredients. Okay guys so in my pan I've got some oh probably about 150-200 grams of chopped up bacon. I've got the um, one of those chorizo and also some, just one onion diced. I'm just going to add some olive oil just to get it going. I don't need too much because it's all pretty um, 
Got a lot of fat in there from the bacon, so I'll see how that goes. If I need to add more, I'll add some more in a minute. But yeah, I'm just um, gonna sweat these down so it gets nice and yummy and get some flavors out of the bacon and the chorizo and soften up the onion. Then we'll start adding some more stuff. Okay guys, so while I've got my spaghetti sauce cooking, I'm just going to put my pork knuckle in the oven to get that going because it takes about an hour for this one to cook. So this is the pork knuckle. It looks kind of gross. Look at this kind of grossness here. Ew. But um, yeah, the macros looked really good, if I can find them. So yeah, on the macros, not sure if you can see, but it's got 0.2 grams of carbs and 0.2 grams of sugar per serve. And it reckons there's about five serves in this pork knuckle. I'm not sure about that, but we'll see how we go. So basically, this is how it comes in a little sealed pack. What we want to do is take that out. It says to um, dry the rind, which I think is this bit here. Dry that with paper towel, rub two teaspoons of oil and one teaspoon of salt into the rind, and then put the knuckle with the rind side up to try and get a bit of crispiness on the rind, and then cook it for 50 minutes per kilo. I've just got it in this small container, a small baking dish, um, because it is quite small, so I'm hoping there's a bit of meat on it and not too much fat. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I've just pulled off all the jelly stuff that was on it. It was kind of gross. So now I'm just going to dry the rind bit here and rub it with salt and oil. Okay, so I have just put my oil and salt onto the pork knuckle. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to put it into a 240 degree oven for one hour. And we're gonna see how this turns out. Hopefully good. Okay guys, so my, um, my bacon and chorizo and onion and I've also got um, a little bit of mushroom in here. It's all being cooked down. It's starting to get some nice flavors in here. So this is the point where I'm gonna add my beef mince. So this is my 500 grams of beef mince. And we're just gonna throw that in there and cook this off. Now I see a lot of people in America using that kind of like star shaped kind of um, tool to break up your meat, meat separator or something. I have got my, got to get myself one of them. Um, I usually just use like the side of a, of my spatula or something just to kind of break it up. But it looks awesome. So I need to get myself one of them, get on Amazon. So yeah, I'm just gonna brown this off and then I'll add my pasta sauce and some salt and pepper as well. Okay guys, so I'm just, uh, my meat is all um, browned up. So now I'm gonna add my jar of tomato pasta sauce. Uh, so this is the moody or muddy, however you say it. But yeah, I am going to dump that in. And I'm also going to add, so it's quite thick. Uh, I'm gonna start off with just half a jar, I think, of water. Actually, I'm going to mix it first, see how thick it goes, because there already is like some juices from the beef. So I'm just going to mix it in first, see how, I think I'm definitely going to need um, some water, just to thin it out just a little bit. I'm just going to get a little bit of water. Okay, so I've just got about to there of water and I'm just going to use that to get the last little bit of sauce out and pull that in. So that's probably maybe a quarter cup of water. And I'm just going to give that a stir. And I'm just going to let it um, simmer for a little bit just to get all the tomato cooked a little bit. And then that's it. I've added salt and pepper. Um, you don't wanna to add too much salt because the pasta sauce will be quite salty. Um, I've seen some people add a bit of stevia, um, or if you're not doing keto, 
Then you can just add a little bit of sugar. I've done that when I'm not on keto. Um, also, if you're not doing keto, just use the lean mints. You don't have to use the fatty mints. But yeah, that is my pasta sauce done. So what I'm going to do is let that cool down and then I'll bag that up and put it in containers. Um, I also do use Ziploc bags um, that I've put in the freezer. I just find them convenient. I'm sure there's probably some other ways you can do it. However, that's how I do it. Uh, so yeah, I am just going to portion this out and then I'm going to move on to my next thing which is taco meat. Okay guys, so now I'm up to my taco um, meat. I'm going to start off with basically the same stuff again. I've got some bacon, a chorizo, and some onion, and I'm going to sweat that off. Oh, my eyes. And then I will add the um, mince. Okay, so my bacon, chorizo, onion is all ready and brown. I'm just going to add my beef mince. Now remember, you don't have to add this stuff. You can add different stuff. You might add more veggies. Um, if you're not doing keto, maybe some carrots. Um, you don't have to add chorizo. I just had it in my fridge and I wanted to use it up. So, um, yeah, that's why I added it. If you want the macros, I use um, my fitness pal. Um, there are some other apps out there. But um, yeah, my fitness pal, you just add in what you add and then you make your own recipe from there. So now I'm just going to brown this off and then I'll add my taco seasoning. Okay, so now my mince is browned. I've added some salt and pepper, some garlic powder, some onion powder and some all-purpose seasoning. Now I'm just going to add in my taco seasoning packet. You can make your own taco seasoning by having the past, but this is just easier. And just mix that around and add a little bit of water. And that is it. That is your taco meat done. Gonna add a little bit of water. I usually do about half a cup just to get it a bit saucy. However, remember that your mint has a bit of moisture in it because it's a fatty mint, so just be wary of that. Also, when it um, cools, you get like a bit of fatty mint, uh, fatty, fatty um, like sauce around it. But you know what? It makes it uh, when you put it on your salad. That's a bit of your dressing as well. So there is your taco meat done. Another one done. Now I am going to get on to. So I've also got a butter chicken and my um, meat bake that I've kind of made up. So um, I might do the meat one first, just so I can get away from the oven because it's so hot. Plus I can let this cool down as well. Okay guys, so the next thing I'm going to do is my um, beef and veggie bake. I don't know what to call it, but that's what we're on to. So basically, um, I get these little beef crumbles from Woolworths. They're just like little bits of beef kind of thing. I've actually got two, I've got one whole one and a half one in here. I'm going to use that in here. Uh, and then I just usually grab some random veggies if I've got capsicum or whatever. So today I've got some beanets that I need to use. They're going to go off soon. I've got a few bits of asparagus. I've got some mushrooms that I'm going to finish using up. And then you have some items for the sauce. I kind of wing it. So I've got some cream cheese here. Some sour cream. And some cream so it's a kind of a creamy sauce well it is a cream sauce and then I add some seasoning so I've got some ranch and dill uh, sorry garlic and dill ranch seasoning so it's a powder it's all stuck to the bottom um, and then I just grab some other seasonings so I've got all-purpose onion and garlic powder and I've also got salt and pepper so this one I basically just throw everything into here, mix it up, 
add some cheese and you're good to go. So let's just go. Here's my cream cheese. Just going to grab like, I don't know. I usually wing it, so let's just go. A couple big heaped tape tablespoons of that. And for the sour cream, grab, I don't know, probably another couple big tablespoons of that. And then for the cream, we just want to make it so it's pouring, so we're able to pour this. So I'm just going to do about half a cup, and then just give this a mix. I'm actually going to add the rest of the sour cream. This is how, so it's it's a bit thick, but not too thick. So that's the kind of consistency I go for, for the um, cream sauce. Now I'm going to add my seasonings, and this is basically just dump it in. So for my ranch dressing, I'll just add a teaspoon of everything else. Not too much of the onion and garlic powder because they have to have a little bit of carb in them. I'm not a big fan of pepper so I just a little bit. Of it. Uh, but salt, add heaps of salt. I'm going to add a little bit more cream just to thin it out just the slightest. Okay, so here we go. It's a bit more pouring consistency. So that is what you want. Okay, so now I'm just going to pour it all over the, um, the meat and the veggies. And then I'm going to top it with cheese and then I'm going to put it in the oven. I just forgot to add, guys, I totally forgot to add the most important ingredient, which was the broccoli and cauliflower. You can use just broccoli or just cauliflower, whatever you prefer, but that's what I use um, in here, which I have totally forgot to add. So, throw this in here. 
Don't worry, it's all gonna fit. Okay guys, so now that I've added all my ingredients, so remember this is a whole meal. It's got your veggies, it's got your meat, it's got your sauce. So this is a, a whole meal. It may look like it's got a lot of cal calories, it does, but it's a whole meal. So you can just heat it up and eat. You don't have to add anything else, it's all there. I'm just gonna add some cheese to the top and then I'm gonna stick it in a um, 180 degree oven for, I'm gonna start for 30 minutes. But really it's just to um, brown the cheese on top and just to cook the cauliflower and broccoli just a little bit. Okay, so I've got some mozzarella cheese which I'm going to use. I have just like a little bit left that I just want to use out of the cupboard, out of the fridge. So that was like barely any, so I'm just going to top it off with some of the three cheese blend, which has the mozzarella, Colby, and Parmesan. Okay guys, so there is my broccoli and um, beef and veggie bake. I'm going to put this in the oven for at 180 degrees for about 30 minutes just to get it all nicely cooked and then I'll portion it up. I'll probably make about four or five portions out of this but remember this is a whole meal so you don't have to add anything, any extra veggies or anything like that. Next I'm on to is my butter chicken. Um, I will have to wait for the oven before I can put this in because it's actually on at 240 for the pork knuckle. So this one I'll just put to the side and then once the knuckle's done, I'll put this in. Okay, so the next thing we're making now is the butter chicken and the cauliflower rice. So I'm gonna start off with the butter chicken. Um, I'm using the same pan, it's still dirty from when I made the spaghetti meat and the taco meat, but that's okay, it's this flavor. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of it's probably about a tablespoon of olive oil, so I've got extra virgin olive oil. And I'm going to add my chicken breast, which I actually um, cut up the other day when I was chopping up the other breast that I was making for the boys. Which is totally disgusting, I hate chicken breast. absolutely hate cutting up chicken breast and even cooking with it. It's just like, ugh. But it tastes good. So this is one mass of chicken breast, which was um, 500 grams that I've just chopped up into cubes. And I'm just going to um, brown this off. And then I'm going to add my Pete Evans butter chicken sauce. Um, it's really good macros, no added sugar, um, so yeah, really good. It's just to add chopped vegetables with it. I usually, um, I have this with cauliflower rice, so while I've got this going, I'm going to get some cauliflower rice and just get that going as well. Okay, so while I've got the butter chicken going, um, we've got the chicken cooking here. Just kind of mix it around a bit. I'm gonna actually make my cauliflower rice at the same time. So I've got um, a couple of tablespoons of butter in there. I'm gonna turn on the heat. So I'm gonna melt that, and then I'm gonna add some cauliflower rice, just the frozen stuff, and then I'm gonna add some seasoning just to make it taste a bit nicer. Okay, so this is starting to melt. I'm just going to open my bag of cauliflower rice if I want there it is. And I'm just going to dump the whole bag. 
So that's 500 grams of the cauliflower rice. That'll be for the four portions of butter chicken. I'm just gonna use this to break it up. Yes, raw chicken, I know, it's bad. But it's cooking, so it should be fine, right? I'll use a different spoon. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to break it up. I'll just let it kind of cook in the butter. Just kind of get nice and yummy. Just going to kind of break it up where you can. Just move it around. If you have a, a lid for it, you could probably put a lid on it and cook a little bit faster. And steam it up. But I don't for this pot, so I'm just going to let it melt down by itself. Okay, so I've got my chicken is browned, like it's not cooked through, through, but it's brown. So I'm gonna add my butter chicken sauce. Like so. Oh, if I can get it out. Now I'm pretty sure you add another. Uh, so it says to add half a jar of water to the sauce. So I've just got half a jar of water in there. I'm just going to shake it up to get all the yummy sauce out and pour the rest over. <coughs> now what you want to do, all you have to do now is mix it around, then set it to simmer and just simmer it until the meat is all cooked through. And that is your butter chicken done. So I'm just going to mix that around. And then I'm just going to bring it to the boil again and then I'm going to let it simmer. Now I'm still working on my cauliflower rice. I'm just going to break up the bigger chunk. add a little bit more butter because remember this is what's flavoring it. Um, I will add some sauce when I'm um, putting it all together. Yeah, I'm just going to just add one more tablespoon of butter. There we go, just dump that in and let that melt down to Okay, so while that butter is melting, I'm going to add some more seasoning. So I'm going to add a bunch of salt. While I'm here, I might add some salt to the butter chicken as well. And I'm going to turn that down to a simmer. I'm going to add um, a little bit of pepper. I really don't like pepper. I'm going to add some onion powder if any comes out. Just remember your garlic powder and under onion powder do have carbs, so don't go too overboard. You can add just a little bit of garlic if it wants to come out. Just a little bit of garlic. And then also some all-purpose seasoning. which probably has onion and garlic powder in it. So you know what, we're just gonna use that too. So now I wanna cook this down for probably another five minutes or so until it gets really mushy. I don't like crunchy cauliflower rice. 
So I want it to get really nice and incorporated and cooked. Because remember, this cauliflower rice was frozen and it was not cooked. But I want to get it nice and scrummy. I'm going to leave that to cook for about five minutes. About the same time as the butter chicken. And then that will be perfect. Okay, so here is the bake that I've just pulled out of the oven. I'm just going to um, portion it up into four. I think four will be good um, because I really do like this one. And I usually take this to work and usually my lunch is my first meal of the day. So definitely like a nice big lunch. Okay guys, so here is everything I've made. It only took me about an hour, hour and a half. Um, so I'll start at this end. So this is the, um, the beef and um, broccoli bake. So um, yeah, I've got four portions of that. And that's a complete meal, remember guys. So it does look like a lot, but it is, I don't have to add anything else to that. Um, these I'll put in the freezer and then I'll just grab them out for either lunch or dinner and just heat them up. Um, I did chop up some salami and some Jarlsberg cheese just as a snack that I can just grab if I'm feeling snacky. Um, here is the butter chicken and cauliflower rice. Um, so I made four portions of that. Here is the spaghetti meat. So I actually got five portions from this. I actually could have stretched it to six, but yeah, I just made a couple a bit bigger. So these ones I've just added some zoodles to. These ones I'll have in the fridge and I'll use up them this in the next few days. These ones I'm just going to put them in the freezer. Um, these ones I usually just um, do the zoodles as I need them, just because I don't like freezing the zoodles. It tastes they just go mushy and gross. Um, here are the taco meat. So I got five portions out of the taco meat. These ones I just um, put in the freezer and then I put them with uh, salad to make like a taco salad. So they are good too. And the last thing I made was this pork knuckle. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this. I'll probably like strip the meat off the bone and then add it to some cauliflower mash or maybe just with some normal vegetables but yeah so there is everything I have made so I hope you enjoyed this now remember a lot of this stuff can be made non-keto so this is just spaghetti this is just taco meat this is just butter chicken but I've used cauliflower rice and this one this one's pretty high calorie but I'm sure you can adapt it to make it less you can make any kind of bake out of this. So there is my keto inspired meal prep. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And I will see you in the comments. Bye.